Greetings, this is Terra Illumination. It's Friday, 13th of October, 2023. This little video is for the Aries, Arian folks, Arians, regarding the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. So it's happening tomorrow. Uh, I wish I'd made these videos earlier, but anyway, we're here now. And remember, the, there's quite a long lag time with eclipses, you know, so this Hopefully this video will be helpful for some time to come. All we're trying to do is get a snapshot here and get some, you know, keywords like bumper stickers that you can, uh, or post-it notes that you can stick on your brain to get you through this, okay? So for eclipses in general, I view them as evolutionary gateways, especially new starts and new beginnings when you're starting with a solar eclipse. So for example, right here, this is the moon transiting in such a way that right here it completely eclipses the sun and if you happen to be in the right geographical location on earth then it really does look like this i've been very fortunate to witness this type of eclipse in my lifetime it's absolutely uh, mind-boggling just to witness it live with this much intensity anyway it's happening right now and in America, that's about one of the only places you can see it, I think. Well, certainly for North America, it's going to be kind of a prominent thing. Oregon, Nevada, Utah, I think Arizona, and some Texas. Roughly middle of the day tomorrow, so it might go shadowy and dark. There are going to be certain areas where it's very obviously dark, and the sun will literally be eclipsed. But you have to be in that very, very tight zone. I made a video about that just a few days ago. Anyway, so for the Aries folks, this Libra new moon solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house, which is Libra, the house of relationships, one-on-one -on -one specific relationships. It also happens that the eclipse aligns loosely with the north node, south node axis. Libra on the south node. So on the south node, we're talking about redundancy and obsolescence in uh, love and relationships, but particularly broadly relationships themselves. And with the eclipse there as well, it's the, it's everything's like amplified, like my gosh, like what is not working in that department? Now, the Libra south node eclipse affects everybody, but it depends where it is in your chart. So that's why we're doing all 12 videos for all 12 signs. But for Aries in particular, it lands in your seventh house, which happens to be Libra, which happens to be the house of love and relationships anyway. So with the South Node, the whole idea is to recognize what is redundant, obsolete, what is taken for granted, what is your default setting, where you everything is on happening in your relationships on autopilot to, and then it's time to discover and realize and understand that some of these things are obsolete, redundant and actually not working and if you're not consciously sorting that out then theoretically the eclipse will sort that out for you where the eclipse will literally eclipse anything that's obsolete and redundant. So it might be upsetting, uh, disturbing in some ways where you realize oh my gosh my whole attitude, belief systems, understanding about relationships are being undermined, shifted, and changed. But the whole idea is to evolve and grow. You might have a specific relationship in particular where you're realizing, wait a minute, I thought this and I'm realizing oh, that. Where does that put me? Am I being my full integral self or is someone inferior and I've allowed that inferiority uh, to occupy my life. I, I, am I the one that has to evolve and grow? Or can I point the blame on someone else so that uh, the problem is not me? But you're still part of the equation because relationships are one and the other, self and other. And in the seventh house, they also talk about the house of open enemies. There's nowhere to hide. It's literally like a mirror uh, because it's pure opposition. So there's the Aries, there's the Libra, or there's the Aries, there's the Libra. Anyway, so you get full-on uh, reflection. 
as opposed to the third house, which would be more like this, or the uh, like a, a square dynamic, which would be like this. Uh, so oppositions, there's really nowhere to hide. You're, you're, it's one on one. You with it. anyway. Let's go to the uh, little astro doodle here. I'll try to help it up. Try and help out a little more. So here's my astro doodle, simplified and stripped down for Aryans. It doesn't mean you have to be a white German Aryan. I'm just talking about Aries. I didn't want to say aliens. I didn't want to say Aries people, but I, anyway, it's Aries people. So it's happening in your seventh house. New starts and new beginnings, which includes old ways that are being, let's say, stripped out, undermined. Actually, I forgot a little bit of a highlight. Let me put that back in there. Give me a second. There we go. So this, this is where the energy is here for you, uh, Aries, over there in your seventh house. So let's have a look at key words of the seventh house. Probably very familiar with this already if you hang out on my channel or if you've done a lot of work on yourself, do your own research. Who are you? Now remember with the south node here as well for the whole world, the south node in Libra for the whole world, everybody on Earth is being challenged to evolve and grow and adapt so that we can become more and more of our true sovereign selves, which is the ultimate uh, like goal and purpose of being who we are in this life, to be your most perfect, awesome, highly evolved version of yourself, because that's the best person that you can be on Earth for yourself and for everyone else. It's just a bit of a chore. So key words, and I put question marks behind all of it because everything here is deeply in question now. Partnerships in general, uh, contracts, strong business partnerships, relationships of all kinds, boyfriends, girls, friends, spouses, parents, children, and uh, marriage in particular. This is the house of marriage. It's also the house of open enemies. You've probably noticed that when a marriage is good, it's great. It's, it's like the best thing that could happen in your life. If you made poor decisions or entered into a marriage contract and discovered that uh, this isn't quite working, it can be one of the worst things that ever happened in your life. Uh, are you dealing with mates in your life? Like close friends, people, with whom you entrust your life or people who entrust their life to you? Uh, how are you handling one-on-one -on -one with one particular person? Are you discovering that there are things about yourself that you are now learning from the other that are actually very uncomfortable? Does that put you in a position where you're questioning yourself versus the other? Is anyone that's not you challenging you in your selfhood and sovereignty? Are you being forced to deal with something very uncomfortable about yourself regarding relationships? Would you prefer to blame the problem on the other? Or are you willing to own it? Self versus other or other versus self. Which is it? It's great to blame the planets for everything, but ultimately we have to take full ownership of our lives. Everything. So in this situation, the mirror is very, very important. Have you been very reliant on the mirror aspect of relationship only to discover that the mirror may be distorted or unhealthy or inappropriate or misunderstood and that mirror needs to go and vice versa? Have you been presenting a false mirror to others? Are you in contracts that you're discovering are not healthy, redundant, maybe abused, maybe uh, very unhealthy contracts in business, agreements that are taken for granted only to discover that there's a lot of abuse going on behind the scenes. Does it get to the point where it's so bad you have to consider divorce, separation? Is, it being, is that being forced upon you? Are you being divorced? Are you being eclipsed out of agreements and contracts? Is the mirror being ripped away from you? Is it so bad? Is the experience so bad that you end up in a state of war, verbal warfare with another? Or is it so bad that someone's taking it out on you? That's how bad it can get. But ultimately, you have to take ownership so that uh, you are the 
the person fully in charge and in control of you. Aries is the sign of self, the selfhood. Who are you? Who are you becoming? Who do you believe you are? Who do you believe you're supposed to be? Where do you think you're going? How did you get here? And so on. A lot of this is going to come under uh, uh, the spotlight. And some of it might be very uncomfortable. I'm just giving you a heads up. The best thing to do is accept it for exactly what it is. Everything is exactly how it should be. Why is that so? It's because it can't be any other way. When you have the beauty of acceptance, then you can take full ownership and evolve accordingly. Like if you have to apologize to another, so be it. If you need an apology from another, so be it. And so on and so on. Uh, let's keep it very direct and simple. That's how it works for Aries folks. Okay. Now, if you need to go into this real deep, you can. You can come to me directly here, terraillumination.com. You can donate. Much appreciated. You can book a reading, connect with me directly, and so on. And go from there. I hope this little video helps you and you can make the best out of it and keep it maybe in the back of your mind and use it as a like a little you know cheat sheet for what's coming over the next few months okay thank you very much aries bye